Thank you, everyone. Um, now I would like to call upon Dr. Uh, Mr. Sanjeev Kumar, uh, Sanjeev Kumar Gupta uh, for his address. Uh, Sanjeev Kumar Gupta is the CEO of Karnataka Digital Economy Mission, the KDAM. It's an initiative by the government of Karnataka. So Mr. Gupta brings in 27 years of experience as an administrator, business leader, entrepreneur, mentor. And monitor whether the bank has been lent to MSME or not. On behalf of FKCC, Madam, I immensely thank you for having monitored and also ensured that the funds have been supplied to the MSME. Thanks to you for such a monitoring. The finance minister, for the first time, we have been seen because we had an experience of to defense minister of this great India. Thanks to our finance minister, when FKCC has been represented before the Honorable Prime Minister of India and finance minister because several MSME been struggled because of the steel price hike and other hike, when we made a representation, Honorable Finance Minister, again through the direction of Prime Minister of India, you have seen that she brought the change in expo banning export of iron ore, make it available for MSME, and again she has been reduced the petroleum and diesel prices, thereby she has been concerned. And the third important thing, she has brought the reforms of payment gateway where MSME supplies to public enterprise used to wait for 120 days, Madam, through her wisdom, through the officials of government and the financial institution, made sure that the moment you make a bill, you get 90% of the credit. I think first time in the history of 90, 70 years, such a move has been brought. Again, I would like to please give a warm welcome to our Honorable Prime Finance Minister. Again, in the COVID pandemic, we have seen the way of living, the way of doing business. That is the time I think Honorable Finance Minister has been stepped in, untiring efforts with the technological disruptive embracing technologies, bringing the initiatives both in income tax and the GST law. And again, all of you should know the digital economy has been shaping. And every minute, whenever we represent before GST Council, any of the issues governing trade industry, Within 24 hours, Honorable Finance Minister to address. One example I would like to say, 18th, 19th, there was a move for GST Council to levy the GST and the pulses when we approached on 16th, 17th, through our Honorable Chief Minister of Karnataka, through Finance Minister, we got a notification from CBAC that she given exemption for the, the labeling more than 26 kgs that is the greatest contribution by Finance Minister. We have presented, we have been invited, delegation to meet the Standing Committee of Parliamentarians on promotion of e-commerce and regulation in India. We have gone through almost 8,000 pages how the e-commerce been across the world when we suggested Without, before, before even we return, our Honorable Finance Minister has brought the game changer. She has been open, the e-commerce platform, for all the traders, including those who have not been registered with GST, by declaration, they can get into online platform. And again, without, implement, without insisting for registration of different states, Madam has been allowed through GST Council that composite sales also he can do online through e-commerce platform. That is the game changer to achieve the five trillion economy of Prime Minister of India. Thanks to Madam, every trade across the taluk, they've been getting on online. We at FKCC have been signed MOU with Amazon. We've been come forward with the global access market for all the traders in Karnataka for two years without processing fee. FKCC always would like to conduct, support the economy of both state and central. I would like to take the, the messages from Swami Vivekananda and Arvind Maharshi, 100 years back, they quoted, say that India has to regain the power. India has to re-emerge. The India has to shine. It's only with the power of youth. Honorable Finance Minister, FKCCF, 105 years of organization with the dedicated guidance of past presidents, MC members, we have been this time invited business month and 
competition from across southern India. We have received more than 625 business plans. The grand finale been held on 18th September. We have given 26 lakh cash prize. More than that, the tie has been offered for all the 75 teams free of incubation for next one year. And again, the Neurogen Group of Engineering and AAC. Thank you, ma'am. May I request the presence of uh, these ladies and gentlemen on the dais to honor our uh, uh, Union Finance Minister. I request Srimati Radhika Prasad to kindly come and dais. Srimati Udaya Reddy, Srimati Leela Lahoti, kindly come and dais as quickly as you can. Sri B.S. Arun Kumar, past president of KCCI. Sri K. Lakshmanan, past president of KCCI. Sri K. Shivashan Mugam, past president of KCCI. C. A. K. Ravi, past president, F. K. C. C. I. And Sri M. Sidinesh, past president, F. K. C. C. I. Request your presence on the dais, please. Yes. <laughs> Applause can still get louder. Thank you. or a compendium of FKCCI's uh, stand taken and also the proactiveness of FKCCI in the last one year. And here goes the snippets of FKCCI in the last one year. so much. May I request, ma'am, for your kind address, please? So the president of uh, FKCCI, Dr. C. A. I. S. Prasad, who's laying down office tomorrow, uh, Sri M. Lokraji, who's the secretary general, B. B. Gopal Reddy, president elect, Ramesh Chandra Lohauti, senior vice president elect and also Perikal M. Sundarji, Dr. Perikal, immediate past president, and also the distinguished audience before me, the learned professionals representing Karnataka. It gives me immense pleasure to join you on the 105th annual general meeting that you're holding today. Thank you for inviting me. It gives me an opportunity to share some thoughts. I'll begin from some of the observations made by 
Shri I.S. Prasad, President, that uh, having gone through the rigors of uh, COVID in which all of us together, the people of India, have pulled through what many other economies are not able to so successfully deal with. We have lots more to do. I'm not saying that we've succeeded in achieving everything that we want. We have come out. Of course, there have been families, individuals, businesses, all of which suffered during this time. The government tried expanding its uh, relief and uh, help and assistance through banks and through various other sources for the poor and the needy as much as for the small businesses so that they are not going to get completely under the weather because of COVID and the lockdown. Thanks to the diligent work of the banking sector, the staff and the officers of the banks, staff and the officers of the various departments, and more importantly also the staff and the frontline workers of the health and uh, uh, medical services, India went through this whole pandemic with, of course, suffering, but succeeded in keeping itself steady and uh, businesses came out of it. There's more assistance needed by some sections. We are attending to them as and when we hear from them. But what is more important is for us to understand that where even developed world has suffered, countries belonging to the developed world even today are struggling on very many parameters, whether it is inflation management, whether it is giving access to vaccination to all those people who need it, whether it is reaching out to the poorest of poor, you find that different countries have had experiences very different from what India has had. When India not only has a very large population and a large country, very differently accessed through roads or any other connectivity parameters, but we've still, because we've had a good technological step taken well in time, not as though it was an anticipation of a pandemic, but necessarily a technological